right, uh, Cherubim Intermediate Level Primer for Embon. Uh, I want to do like an um, Intermediate Level Guide thing for some suits I played a lot. I feel like they're lacking resources or like his player knowledge. And some things are lacking on the JP Wiki. Um, just put a little free battle here for first for Quick thing to Cherubim. Uh, long range sniper suit, pretty much the quintessential sniper of this suit. I mean, that game. Others would be like GRK, and I would count Q play as a sniper as well. Some people count Montero, <laughs> though that, that sub is um, it's a pretty big sniper. Um, yeah, you yeah, have long, long red lock, and the main is the main weapon to hit scan type sniper thing. Though the sniper has quite a bit of startup. But it, the projectile travels extremely quickly. Though you might not see it, but I'm probably most likely don't. The, the the snipe actually it does have a few frames of travel time. It's like three to five frames. It can be. This is surprising because I remember looking at it before in like a GR Kane and that the travel time on that might be a little faster. But it's just an interesting tidbit. So I'm gonna assume you know like some basic stuff about this suit. So I'm just gonna jump. Jump right into some like properties and the weapons of the suit. So you're like a long range support suit, and um, because you can kind of break the normal rules of the game with the snipe and hit people at ranges, situations normally but not possible, you will be gathering people can be coming after you once you get decent at sniping because you cannot be ignored. And that means there's quite a bit of pressure on you, and there's a lot of pressure on your partner. Mm -hmm. With this suit, so this is not like a chill, chill out support suit. If you want that, this is probably not the pick to go. And also, if you want a more versatile suit, I think it's worth like thinking: Do you want to play Cubole or Cherubim? Because they can both kind of snipe, but Cubole can also melee and all kinds of stuff like that. And I'll go more into the specific Cherubim later. But yeah, mm, so you also damage health, which is kind of low on this suit. You have a lot of pretty good weapons, but the damage is not, nothing really does, for example, over 200 damage. The only thing that can do over 200 is your super. Um, and the super is really bad. So this most likely not happen. So you can't damage rage with this suit. So that that's another thing that's uh, heavy on your partner, is um, your partner needs to be good at having presence and good at surviving, or Cheren will be a burden for the team, basically. So it's hard to t play in shuffle or with low cost, for example. Or in just uh, like a lower level lobby when people don't uh, don't really know how to uh, defend themselves or they don't know that with Cheren they should be more passive, for example, that they should play slower. Cheren wants to play slow because you can snipe. And you get your weapon, your sniper reloads, your shield bits reload. The shield bits are very strong. That's one very strong point of this suit. Uh, depending on your partner's suit, the enemy suits, the strength varies widely. Some partners it's super strong on, some enemies it's very useless against. Like a melee partner is very strong on Epion Master. Can like with them with shield bits can be like absolutely devastating, especially in burst. Whereas if the enemy suit a lot of suits have tools that just hit through the shield bits, so the shield bits are a tool that... I'll, I'll use them, so they deploy like a shield around the suit, uh, and starts causing the ammo, uh, which is like a timer, and it's also health, so... Uh, there's two, way, two ways it's drained, it's drained by damage and by time, the, the like ammo of the shield bit. So it takes a set amount of damage, and or a set amount of time, and it's used up. But some suits have weapons that just straight up, like, immediately hit through the bits, like bazookas or some, like, fast damaging Gerobis. Though it does help against Gerobis, they're, like, it'll block them for a few frames and you might escape, say, like, uh, fangs, like, reborns or scrambled fangs. You might just barely clip through them. But it's definitely, like, worth on them. And even with suits that have tools that go through them, they're generally not all of their tools. But there are suits like, a, let's say, GPO3 and um, Camphor, they just generally all of their tools to see through the shield bits, which is unfortunate. 
But yeah, just some general things about the suit. I'll, I'll start going through the weapons. Since this, this is meant to be like intermediate level, I'm gonna go into some specifics of the weapons instead of just a quick overview here. So first I'll cover weapons, then fast falls and advanced techniques, then some strategy, um, and then watch some match videos. But uh, in this first few videos, I'm not gonna watch uh, match footage that much because uh, I want to do a separate video of those. Uh, hopefully like once I'm more high level at the game and watching other players replay as well instead of just my own because uh, there are multiple playstyles to these suits and more optimal playstyles than my own, for example. It's better to get a general idea of the suit's performance. Um, Alright, so we'll go through the weapons. So main is the snipe, is the main reason you're using this thing. And um, immediately I'll say like, so it has quite a bit of startup, but that means you can dash cancel out of the startup. And you're like, oh, that master gun, there's no way I'm gonna hit him, you just dash cancel. That's one thing. Another thing that's not so obvious is there are two versions of snipe. There's the sliding snipe, which is when you're moving in any direction. You do this like different pose. Oh. Yeah, when, when you're not like boost dashing, yeah. Walking or boost dashing, you can't be hopping. You get this sliding thing. But that, so the sliding shot is a uh, longer startup and actually a worse muzzle correct too. So it's quite bad really. Um, apparently the reason it has worse muzzle correction is because uh, uh, on 5a since it's shorter the same amount of correct is like in a shorter period of time so it's stronger the, the correction is stronger for any any time it's like correcting something like that i think i'm not 100 percent sure anyway you should generally be going for 5a and it can be tricky because it's say I'm, I'm boost dashing on a sniper well you just get the sliding shot if you're just putting normally the main workaround is um you release the boost dash, uh, you exit boost dash and then you fire right when it ends and to get used to this delay timing. Or you're boost hopping in the fire, this, these are the two ways you often be firing. Uh, I'll, in advanced techniques I'll cover, there's a workaround to this where you can, I'll just show you, you can immediately snipe out of boost dash, so, I'm sorry. there we go. That is possible, I'll show it later. That's a very strong thing that a lot of people know about. So that's snipe. Um, so it allows you to kind of break the rules again. You can uh, hit people at ranges normally not possible. You can punish people's poor boost management at ranges normally not possible. Um, with 5A, since it's pretty good performance, it's closer to, it's pretty close to GRK main. GRK main has a better muscle correct though. And I was still relating that uh, Cherdom is not that good at uh, like actively cutting, like uh, saving his partner from trouble. Uh, another reason why there's even more pressure on his partner is he, these weapons are not the best at like intercepting an enemy that's hitting your partner because the main is not that not that hot, and you don't have a beam rifle, etc. But yeah, main. Uh, so due to the five A's high performance, you're gonna hit uh, blue blue boost landing sometimes if you read their landings so like at first glance you might be like all oh, right sharing punishes uh, red landings or red landings or that's what i use my snap more for but actually you can also you also hit people's vernier moves and you hit uh, low boost landings by making reads you predict the opponent's movement that's a majority of a large part of your snipes is like these kind of predictive shots and again you can if the prediction fails and you have spot on reactions sometimes you will sometimes you won't probably um, you can boost dash cancel and save the ammo but yeah that's one thing so if that's uh, one one reason to play this suit if you like like um reading people's habits and punishing them you have a way to do that at a uh, long range here in neutral, which makes neutral can make neutral quite a bit more interesting because um, it's like a, you're like actively um, reading the opponent, and they have to see what you're, you're thinking as well, most likely. And so about the main as well. So the reload time is actually pretty fast. So I would say. You do want to snipe fairly actively, especially if you only have one ammo left, just fire out the last shot. Um, 
like, like be more like fire the last shot more actively just to get a reload you don't want to have generally it might be a bad idea to have a long downtime in how you're using your main but of course it depends on how the match is going if your partner is just destroying everyone and you're low health then all right <laughs> sure but most of the things i'm covering here I'll, I'll assume like the players are around the same level or whatever so with things that shouldn't be happening maybe they shouldn't be happening um what else um well, I'll, I'll cover me more later in advanced techniques so for now just uh, you're punishing red landings overheat uh vernier moves maybe reading people's landings etc um, getting used to like seeing you get a good idea with this suit how much boost uh, your opponents have left that's kind of a requirement to hitting me so the skill floor and the skill ceiling for using the main are very high and like a main reason why this suit is both strong and hard to play is there's a lot to a lot to get into in that part all right i'll, I'll cover the rest of the weapons now i'll actually do um the pistols now so this is your melee button Fires, you can fire three pistols in a row, mashing B. Um, it's Vernialis, so you can like fool while doing this, which is quite nice. Alright, I don't think of it as like a machine gun, uh, except it stuns in two hits. Since there are gaps, you can't uh, use it offensively as strongly as a machine gun, because people, well, if there's a gap, the enemy might escape, like land between the gaps, etc. But for defense, it's quite nice, because you will easily hit stun them. And it actually does a decent amount of damage. Like you can see there, 174 will do like 180 pills for if we do three pistols in the main, for example. So that's pretty nice. Um, the, muscle, the, the tracking isn't very strong on these, but they have infinite ammo. They're, they're quite nice. Um, you need to get used to using these pistols because they're a core for self defense and like some level of presence. And especially, like, like just you, you will have to need play it close range with children as well it's just not you don't have the privilege of just playing long match all the time um there are more mobile mobile uh, things than you etc and situations where you just can't just hang back and if you do back turn me uh melee you get this uh, back turn pistol generally this is a bad thing you don't want this version um it does make you do a weird landing thing so it might mix people up and it's i think it causes hits down a bit easier but it's Generally, it's just a punishment for not facing the enemy when you're shooting. So, like usual, it's a, like a 90 degree angle. This is your angle for being off target. So that's actually so that, that since this is the only bonus tool on the pistol, the only bonus tool, the only reason to correct your direction is with the pistols. It's worth keeping in mind. I tend to always correct anyway. Um, but if you're not planning on using the pistols your facing doesn't matter at all for any other weapon which is pretty interesting part of this suit get yeah, pistols kind of like a machine gun surprisingly high damage like the Sunda, like 162 that's that's like more than a normal Sunda. that's quite a bit but it takes a long time however that can have its benefits if i do like let's say i'm here and i do back for what pistols Oh, okay, <laughs> there was so funny. So, since the tracking is weak, it, it might like the sometimes the rest of the shots miss. Let me hit it. Target's not against the wall. Two, three. But yeah, so you, if you'd like back for a pistol, you can gain distance while firing and you're doing a long combo. So, you can actually use the length of the combo to gain distance, which is pretty interesting and definitely something you want to go for since you are a zoner type basically all right i'll go through sub now that is your assist it sends a survey i think like the second tier suit a neutral sub is a garobi assist and like normal assist these are like instant don't even boot stash out of it, it just comes up so the garobi assist quite nice but it only does 100 damage as high muscle correction um comes out pretty quickly uh, pretty good for like close range defense because it blocks out at a certain angle and it's fast. Um, can definitely catch people, but since it's a low damage, you want to try to confirm this into the main. Like, there, 
yeah, 168. They would normally like you can do like 180. I think even all more than 180, which makes that damage more normal for Gurobi. For some reason, the the Gurobi takes a especially long time to knock down the enemy, so you do have time to confirm the main. That's definitely something you want to uh, get used to. Like seeing oh, oh they're getting hit by the Gero. That's not that's one thing you want to learn. Directional sub is. Uh, like triple shot, double, like they're pretty wide hitbox with two shots. It's like you kind of like a zoom to assist, but one step and the rest will miss. This is like a generic, like let's let's put more barrage on the enemy, let's throw out more bullets. This is kind of the way to do it because this is like actual like beam rifle performance, unlike your pistols. So that's something to use for, for barrage or for since sub is also used for use to very fast draw, you need to think about when do you use for these for purely attacking, when do I use for these for fast falls, when do I use these at close range. Generally I would say directional sub, more important long range. Uh, though they, they, they both have their purposes um, at close range. The gear will be of course you can block out like a line on the ground if you if you aim it at someone who's ground level you can create a little wall on the ground can be especially nice if your partner is getting okayed or whatever. Right, and then I'll, I'll cover the sub a bit more in the fast fall section. Oh yeah, okay, one more thing about directional sub though. Since it's three shots, so if you see the first shot hit, the guy is probably gonna get down. So that causes a nice little long, um, if you see that hit, you can switch targets. So get used to doing that, because it will down. And I would say the damage is pretty high, so you can you can um, combo into main for a little more damage, but it's up to you to decide whether that's worth the main ammo or not. Or do you want to check out what's going on with the other target, for example. But again, if you have to say one sniper ammo, maybe you want to reload your main. Maybe you want to get that damage and reload. Oh yeah, I didn't think I went through this on me, but you want to go for the, um, the off the ground hit, because you get Quite, like your damage goes from 120 to one, about like 145. That's definitely a thing you want, especially if it's a hard to take target or the enemy back. You're going for an overcost or whatever, you just go for that. And you should have the time to OHD is surprisingly long when, when you get used to the snipe timings. Uh, so you might even, you should even have time to look at the other enemy uh, between deciding to OTT or not. And be like, okay, is there a free shot on the other guy? No, okay, OTT. The guy I just hit. Etc. Or, you know, look at the other guy, oh, can I even OTG? Because it is a risk involved in burning like that. Alright, so AC and pistol bits. Neutral AC puts them around you, like a like a deploy funnel. It's a lot like Strike Freedom or Laos or... Is there no, even any else? Oh yeah, Farsi, I kind of have this, yeah. Um, so the interesting thing about these ACs, uh, it looks like they have an animation, but you can immediately boost dash, and um, they have a very short animation, you boost dash out of it, so I'd recommend just boost dash immediately out of it. Um, there's no reason to hit, hit through the animation, apart from, it does carry quite a bit of momentum, so you can like, on landing level you can do this, and you'll faint your landing, you'll like burn your, on top of the ground, and the enemy might be like, oh he landed, no, he just deployed the, the bits, and dashed or whatever. So that's one reason not to immediately boost dash. I would say in all other cases, just boost dash cancel out of it. Because what you want is to bits out the, the actual deployment. There's no reason to sit around for that. Um, so the deployed panels, when you push AC again after the deployed, they'll fire the amount of bullets that's in your ammo. Uh, up to six, five, six shots, since it's six bits. And this is burning, a burnless thing that, that is always facing the enemy. A burnless attack is always facing the enemy, so this can never back turn, etc. And this is what is this input is what is used for your fast fall, the deployed bits um, firing. I'll go through the fast falls later. And uh, directional AC is your like funnel. If you send the pistols out like funnels, fire around the enemy. I will say the AC, the, the reload time on the final is not too fast. You want to be careful about how, when you fire these. Especially these directional fire. You don't want to send these out when you have one ammo. You'll only one of the pistol bits will fire. Et 
acid run. For the fast balls though, you can have a low amount of ammo. That's the, the ammo count doesn't matter for that. And yeah, like the other one, you, you should immediately boost dash out of that. Right? One thing worth noting on the directional funnels is that the bits fire, um, they use the ammo when they're firing, so I can actually send without one ammo, send out the bits bursts, and they will fire every time. And let's say I'm oking this person, that might be a good strat, because I'll burst on top of them, the bits will be reloaded firing. I get, a, you, I get to actually use my burst time to attack the enemy the rest of the time. So a niche thing you can do with that. Reload. Right. So yeah, again, about the neutral AC, you can like, I can just be jumping away from my enemy, they're gonna fire at the enemy, so that's quite nice. At close range, this is uh, generally the 5 AC is your defensive type, defensive option, the directional AC is your offensive option, since the directional AC forces the enemy to use boost, and the 5 AC is like close range self-defense, or for fast fall purposes. And also directional AC, of course, just supporting your partner and like throwing out a barrage of stuff like this. this. And then, you know, assist on top of that, snipes, etc. The 5 AC, not so good for barraging, because that's, that's just a straight decline of bullets. It's not very... Not very versatile in that kind of range. Um, yeah. Alright, then... It's, uh, shield bits. So this will... Again, deploy a shield on view, and I'll show it again. Um, like this. So you get a shield, it will take damage and drain over time when it's deployed. You can also deactivate it, which always causes a fastball. So you put BC again, you get a fastball. You can also send it to your partner, which I'll show soon. And what's interesting, you can perform that fastball even while they're. When the shield bits are used, there's a small travel time before they return to you when you can still do that fast roll. Basically for free, you get a free fast roll during that period that most people probably don't know about. And you send it to your partner. And one, one thing important, there's travel, significant travel time when it goes to your partner. So if you cross map, that can actually, that can take seconds to get to your partner, the bits. So you need to be careful about telling your partner when they get bits or whatever. You need to get used to that travel time. Um, I, I like to call my partner that I'm sending them bits and then like they react to them reaching them But it might be better to like learn the timings perfectly yourself and be like, okay, now you're getting bits, but that's pretty demanding In general, I would say just at long ranges be careful about the timing it might be so easy And again, you can cancel out the bits Let's say my partner is Baal or something, they're getting their like nearly impossible to cut combo, just cancel the bits. They'll reload faster, which can really help you. Same with if, if the bits are on yourself, I'm 1v1ing one, one a 2k or something. I knock them down or I take the bits off because I'm not there's no point consuming ammo while they're lying on the ground. Etc. Alright, covers the basics of the shield bits. I'll go through cancel routes now. Main only cancels into shield bits. I used to not even know about this cancel rod until recently. Don't see this use too much, but let's say you're overheated due to a main. That's quite nice. And it's just safe boost, period. But you need to fire the main is to actually come out. So it's. And it's, it might be a little slower than performing normally, but that's a cancel rod. Um, for the rest, um, sub cancels into AC. So like assist into bits. And I'll, I'll show the fast fall here, so... Assist to the deployed bits firing is a fast fall. That's your main fast fall. And then... Sub also cancel the shield bits. Basically everything cancels the shield bits apart from uh, AC. Uh, AC doesn't cancel anything. Uh, AC and uh, BC don't cancel anything apart from charge shots. I'll go through the charge shots now. The shard shots are more niche things, especially CSA, though I'll, I'll go through CSA first. So CSA shoots a bunch of missiles from your waist. This is like, some people don't use this at all. Um, I like to use it when I'm out of main ammo, because I might as well charge the main. Uh, it is very, it causes this, like, really easy to come from launch into main, which is, like, I think that's one reason you use this. It's, like, if you're just throwing this out, you'll just get, like, 
randomly get hits like that, that's a lot of pretty good damage. And the side, so there's neutral and side CSS, the side CSS you would see, you can just catch sideways movement with that, which is pretty cool at certain ranges, like it'll actually miss a stationary target, but if they're moving to the sides, you might catch them, so that's, that's an interesting tool to have. Um, and since uh, you can cancel everything with CSA, you can cancel pistols into CSA and do like pistol CSA fast forward. CSA AC is your only other fast forward with sub AC. And okay, yeah, the, the canceling the shield is fast forward as well. Those are like three. But sub AC is your main one. So I'll go through those one day. And um, then CSA. Kind of not very useful, but if you want to throw more stuff out, this. So related to actually yeah, this is really important. So related to cancel routes, AC as CSA just canceled AC. So this is like since AC is nearly instant, you can just whenever you throw CSA, just push AC after. This is a habit I have at least. But there's no reason not to um, just uh, directional AC for more more attack barrage. Uh, deploy AC for more defense in the building. Like this is set up to set up the the AC if you want to shoot at the same time. Instead of just doing AC, you can do that cancel kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. And then for CSB. CSB has, a, for example, grounded versions. There's like six different versions of this. There's a sideways, uh, grounded, air, airborne. But the main one... Uh, okay, so one reason I'm in free battle though. There's a, the max charge because this double lock thing which shoots both enemies. You really don't want that. It's very useless and you can't see what's happening because of the camera angle. Um, the way to prevent this is you press uh, Vermeer attack, like main or AC, before firing. The main CSB you want to use is side CSB, so like uh, you, you press main for a little moment, you release B, you get side BS, CSB, the side wall. I'll, I'll let the whole animation come out, I guess. Shoot some more. And actually, um, let's show this. So. You actually like um, switch targets. And it, you can see that even has a pretty decent tracking, it's pretty interesting. One noticeable thing about this side CSB is the muscle, it actually targets the enemy right before firing. The rolling part, if they step it, it doesn't even matter. Uh, it tracks right before firing. That makes it a strong defensive tool against melee. And forces people to not, like, like they can't pull dash towards you or whatever. They, they need to, like, move to the sides to avoid that move. And it's hard to step because it targets right before firing as well. Right. Um, CSB does cancel into... EC and BC, but it takes like it takes forever. Like it takes that long to cancel. But sometimes you end up using CSB in overheat. So these are something to consider. Like as a last, like an overheat anti melee thing, for example. Uh, I'll go through air stalling for some uh, <laughs> at this point. Just kind of like just related to how weapons are used. How Sheridan can air stall is um. You do main. Main needs to have ammo though. Main, um, CSB, CSA. But he's not very good at air stalling. So, so it's block between each action do those. Sometimes you have to do it. Maybe it buys you enough time to get shield bits or whatever. So it's a thing that, that can happen in matches. Um, yeah. One important thing I forgot to cover, you do have one like melee type action, that's 2B, that's your melee common. Every other B input gives you pistols. Oh yeah, and related to pistols, you do need to, I would say, you want to practice like back four pistols. Uh, it's easy to accidentally input 2B, at least, yeah, if you just do. You'll get 2B easily if you don't release the input direction to neutral. But yeah, melee counter very fast. Um, I don't think it'll, the, the counter stays active for very long, but the start of it is very fast, one of the fastest in the game. And the counter itself is not very good. It doesn't even knock, cause a proper knockdown, damn slow. So you actually wanna, when you do hit the counter, you don't wanna cancel into back full of pistols, like three shots. Oh, that's, ah, oh, they're both hard master. You wanna do like two B, one, two, three, and then man, something like this. Do that. Uh, it does way more damage. Proper knockdown. You can a lot of distance. 
these are very good things um, instead of the enemy getting their air tech in front of you while you're doing your stupid counter animation yeah and you can use two video air stall as well because it has this weird spinning thing on your but yeah we must kind of wish all right fast more about the fast falls so Actually, I'll switch to different mode here. It's easier to test some stuff in this room. Um, fast walls. So, the main fast walls sub C, so just step sub AC. Is really strong because it's only to, I'm not even facing the opponent. I can just, like you can just do this fast fall. You don't need to care facing or you're facing changing. And since it causes a free fall, you can fire um, pistols immediately out of it if you want a bit more barrage out of your AC or whatever. Right there, I'm firing pistols. But be careful, uh, you want to be really careful, you don't get uh, back turn pistols on accident, so if you want to do that, be careful. A lot of times you don't even need to shoot the pistols, but a lot of times, you might. if you're trying to chase someone, of course, you want to shoot them a bit more. One interesting thing, I can, okay, so I can fire AC and then, like later, I can still do the fast fall. You might want to do that, like, if you want to separately fire the AC, that's a thing. So that's a strong fast fall. Now I'll start going into the more advanced stuff here because there is there are advanced things related to Turner's fast falls. Basically, he can have infinite fast falls. Mm. But about this normal fast fall, yeah, th think about like yeah, try to manage your sub ammo so you have access to fast falls in important moments. Like you don't want to be caught out surprised and. Think about which assist you use as well. Um, and yeah, generally when you're fast falling, uh, you are using up both your salt and AC ammo. But I'll go to some advanced stuff here where you, you can fa do the fast fall without using up your assist, which basically gives you infinite fast falls because the fast falls work even when you have no AC ammo. So that's to begin with, that's not a problem. So the basic way to do this is to be, to be, okay, there is a double, what's called double fast fall, I'd say. Um, so do to be step uh, sub AC. So to be into a fast fall, basically. We'll give you a fast fall that doesn't, doesn't use up sub. Which is very strong. Of course, you are burning a bit between to be, so be careful when you're doing this, but. If you are, if you know that you're not going to hit doing the 2B and you want to not consume assist, then you can do that. Let's say you're getting Esper's, it's getting, let's say you're getting chased by uh, Esper's Z. And you see a gap in your shots, alright, let's land here quick. I didn't use up any of my fast fall, like, uh, ammo. I, I didn't use sub, sub, so I can continue fast falling the next time I need to. So it's very strong. Uh, let's say I get you against them. Um, a melee suit is close range, you probably do want the assist to shoot them. Because at close range, the like having step on mechanic becomes less strong than against projectiles. So, but then again, when you use this, you will confuse your opponent. They'll be like, how much sub ammo does he have? He keeps fast falling, what is going on? And you can do that, what I showed before, the double fast fall. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll show that one more time. Just the double fast fall. Yeah, there's the to be step sub AC. Pretty nice. Also nice because often if you have AC ammo, the AC ammo is also good enough for the self defense portion. Oh, there is another thing about to be. It does uh, correct your facing. So if you want to shoot pistols, you can use this to like to be into for what pistols is uh, pretty. Pretty nice option. Or that fast one, as you know. Um, can, can work out for you in, regarding the pistols. But on top of 2B, there's actually... Um, 
there's a way to fast fall without even using sub, which is 2B step CAC. Something like that. The faster the input is, the more like a fast fall it looks like. If you do it slowly, that's what kind of it, 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 like that barely looks like a fast fall, right? Um, you can do this very quickly, it'll, it'll look like a fast fall. It has less horizontal momentum, so it's more even more important to do this at ground level, I think, than the other one. But this is something you do even what like, uh, sub, which can be quite strong in one one. But again, be careful, you're burning him a little bit less than normal. So think about when you use this. And of course, you're using ACM also. For, in general, just through these fast falls, uh, don't. It's very easy to fa fast fall without a purpose. Like you're just like doing cool stuff. You want to do cool execution stuff, all right, but you're wasting your pistol bit ammo. I'd say just. I mean, I just play more, you'll get used to it. You'll get an idea when you do need to fast roll, when you do need to help your partner more, etc. Because generally when you're using the AC ammo for these, you are using the AC ammo for self-defense. Uh, or like melee range chasing someone, which is generally not what you should be doing in a good, good situation to begin with. So, some food for thought. Um, yeah, but actually, so the general rule for the easy, like easy to perform uh, fast forward that doesn't use sub is um, actually just perform any attack and do uh, sub AC. There's a cooldown before even the sub can be consumed, but for some reason the counter rod still comes out. So you can do main sub AC. Like, they're always like, oh, the main sniper isn't gonna hit, let's land. And something to do, that's pretty interesting. That's you basically you just free parting as well as long as you have a bit south. Or I can even do um pistols. Oh yeah, I kinda of screw. You can even do pistols. And do do stash. Yeah. Um yeah. You can even do um let's, let's try and get this. Yeah there, okay, so you can do uh, you can even deploy bits, uh sub boost dash, sub AC. If you do that at ground level, neither sub or AC is consumed. And you get bit out, that's pretty interesting. So really you can do like any any attack can be done with your boost dash fast fall. Just remember there's no step there. Unless you do uh, pistols with a step into that. I think that one is a bit more niche, but you can do some interesting stuff with the boost dash fast fall like that. And the reason the AC uh, the 2B step CS all this works is because um the the AC input is like overlapping with the boost dash input and it causes the step the FUWA like the, the step hop, whatever you want to call it, it just cancels out into a fall. Cause it's like doing a boost dash and a free falling move at the same time. Or something like that. It, a full fall has a similar technique, the the X1, X2 have a similar techniques. Um, I think there's someone else, I don't remember. Some, people, some suits have this technique, it's pretty interesting. I would say it's worth learning. Because um, now you have like, you just always have some kind of free fall, that's kind of crazy. Um, but again, the, the assist version is stronger. One thing about this is when it is possible to do it without using assist, even without um, any of this trickery, uh, without using another attack. Uh, but there's like a one or two frame timing. Uh, the problem is like you do, you need to press and release sub input like super quick. So A need to be released in like a couple frames and repress for AC. That's I think the hard part. For me, it's too hard, so I, I don't I don't expect to perform that. So I just do the do the other methods, which is what most the JP players do as well. I've heard like one NA player is able to perform most of the time the just step sub AC without consuming sub, which is pretty, that's a very nice skill to have. So if you can do that, that's, that makes the suit even stronger. That's that's really nice. So because you can fully at will choose when you want to fire assist when you just want to fall down. Yeah. Now other advanced stuff. Um, oh yeah, so by fast fire, let me, let me show them. CSA fast oh, <laughs> I did so there. This isn't very important, but if you're using CSA, you realize that you can do this. Do AC after CSA for a fall. It's pretty cool. Especially if you're if you're landing a Zunda type of thing with your pistol, you can just end it with that fast fall. And do max damage. But again, you're using AC ammo. It's unfortunate. 
Unless maybe you're on ground level. Okay, I'm not gonna try to test that. If you're on ground level, the AC probably isn't a problem. Um, yeah, so about the main. More about the main. Like your snipe, which is the most important thing in this suit. So the workaround to get 5A in all situations. Um, I mentioned before, you can release boost dash in 5A. That's one way. But you can also do boost dash into immediate 5A, so neutral, uh, stick neutral 5A. Very easy to practice it first by doing it after landing, because you have time to buffer the start of the dash. The, tr the most important thing is just inputting 5, like m making sure your stick is uh, neutral before pushing the main button. Um, this can be stronger than you think, because... Um, so when you do slide main, it does have some positive properties. So this thing, if I do boost dash to this right and uh, thing right main, you can hit uh, target small thing to the right. Uh, so that's that would be one reason to use the sliding main. But if I do this boost dash 5A, it has very similar property, except it also has faster and better muscle correction. So you kind of get the get benefits of both. However, if I do boost dash to the left 5A, it is worse at hitting moving opponents moving to the right. So there is, you're making a read this point. If you don't want to make a directional read, maybe like do back dash main. That's why people in general, they, they, people in general might even do back dash slide main. You see people doing that because they, they gain distance and they snipe and they're not screwing their direction up. But again, the slide main has slower startup than the one that's on 5A. So it generally should not be used, but it is, since it's slower, it is easy to dash cancel out, out if you see it's gonna miss. So for like guaranteed punish hits, yeah, use the slide main, probably doesn't matter. But one thing about the slide main can miss stationary targets, which is ridiculous, which is one reason you, you do not want to be generally using. And again, it is slower, so it cannot hit uh, blue boost landings, for example, and it's just generally worse. So you want to practice uh, release dash into 5a and boost dash 5a you can do boost dash 5a like again after landing it's very easy in the area you can do it it's harder input but you can do it after some practice now another way it's easier and actually very strong is step boost dash 5a now you're cutting tracking and forming uh, your best snipe and you're moving quite a bit so you you're doing a, a step into a very strong move Basically, and if you don't know this technique, this is basically a new move for sure. Oh, I, I can do, I can snipe people in one one. I can do step boost dash. Okay, there. That's not fine. That's kind of funny. But if you if you get if you practice like this is the thing you should be into in training mode of children. Just practice the fast falls. Practice the five uh, CC five A. These are like execution things to get down, and then it'll be easy in matches. But yes, I'm one, I'm one running Dark Town here. He's shooting machine gun. I can do a step boost dash 5A. And normally people don't expect, like, that's not a thing that Sheridan should be able to do normally. It's more like a, something that GR game would do, for example. Or uh, EXS would do step AC. Um, but now you have that kind of move on Sheridan. And you can do this in uh, all eight directions. I'm not sure about the use of the four directions, but. The back directions are obviously quite nice. Like diagonal back must be pretty nice because it's like a make. It, it, there's less risk of hitting, missing opponents moving in the opposite direction, and you're moving back, and you're not moving directly back. So a lot, a lot of things to think. Once you, once you start doing this technique, there's a lot to. Um, there's a whole lot more going on because now you have a much more potent snipe. And at any any point, you can do the better snipe. And even step out of it. So since it's in that direction, let's say the opponent is to my right. Um, opponent is to my right. Let's do forward step, uh, forward dash 5A. Then I'm like perfectly dodging the opponent from the right. Stuff like that. Mm, other advanced things. So for some reason, when you have zero main ammo. Firing it caused it to not drop down. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. So, I think I, that's right. Okay, okay, I got the drop, sorry. 
if you do that while you main reload, he fires with drop shot. But that usually misses a stationary target. It's not very useful. I would say it is useful to like do the snipe startup into burst firing because. Uh, oh yeah, this is an important thing about the snipe actually. Let's just reload. The turn gets some big uh, benefits during burst because of the trans like transamp state. One is he moves faster. The other is his uh, snipe startup becomes significantly faster. And I believe the muscle correct might be improved. Doing a transamp, the snipe is so good that I would not even worry too much about getting 5A over the sliding snipe because it just becomes a pretty god tier move. You just want to hit any snipes you can during transamp or you know, just make it work. That's one reason the super is bad on, on transamp. Them is because your main is so good, you're wasting your stun on the super. Yeah. Uh, interesting thing about the shield bits, you can actually like perform this weird fast fall where you cancel the bit deployment immediately. I think it's related to just like when they're returning, you can cancel them out while they're actually activating without using up. And like yeah, basically a free fall, a fast fall, but I wouldn't. I don't know the use of that first one though, to be honest. Um, and like I said before about the shield bits, when they're returning from your partner or even returning from yourself, you can fast fall with the BC button for a moment while they're flying towards you. Yeah. Um, more advanced stuff. I think that pretty much covers my stuff. I'll, I'll actually, so the super is pretty bad, but I'll show some things about it. Generally, it is never used, but there's some easy ways you can the super, like directional sub hits, or like boost super, or like 240 damn something. It's not amazing. Now there is uh, hit CSA. Say side CSA hits, like from this range. Okay, I mean, I guess it's really good. Okay, 2 30. Again, the damage is kind of sus. Like, it does over 200, and that's a good for Sheraton, but in a super, it's kind of kind of interesting. And but uh, I think the best use of this, but it's a little too hard to perform to be practical. You can actually combo the pistols into super. That's really hard. Okay, that was three pistols. You, you do more than, you did like 280 if you do a single pistol into super. But I think it's very hard to input. You need to super immediately after the pistols connect. It's quite hard to time. You can learn that, that's really nice though. That's like your max damage use of the super. And quite nice. And also if someone is blocking the super, it is, you're pretty safe uh, in a one in one sense because it ends the super works first. Uh, Cerevi shoots this stun orb, then uh, Terrium snipes, and Terrium shoots missiles, similar to your side CSA. Uh, the missiles will take a while to hit connect with their blocks, so you actually recover before the enemy sometimes. But in general, you're just not gonna get opportunities to land this super. This is something interesting, you know. Uh, one other, you, you can actually combo the super from the gero assist sometimes if the gero assist hits upwards and pops them up in the air if you do perform the super it'll cancel out the rest of the gero B and you can super them out of mid-air it's a cool thing that can happen right um so I talked a lot about snipes so uh, a lot of it is you know making reads punishing people I think the higher level the games get, the more it's about making reads and punishing verniers, and less about punishing overheat. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of pressure on your partner, so you actually do get to snipe. But um, oftentimes you do need to play a close range game, and it's like alright, fast falling on people with, uh, with the, the, fa you know, the, the pistol bits or shield bits. Uh, I'm attacking at 2k, for example, and like alright. And then the bits cancel out the shield bits. Well, maybe it'll happen. Like, you're pretty put in uh, one million low cost, and like surviving, surviving good at surviving in one room once, even against high tier suits. So, 
Like you, you didn't want to run performance, but you're not your tools to actually hit the enemy in close range. You're not so hot, so even more pressure on your partner to perform well, or your partner dealing damage. Like you might just be stalling for time. And then all right, let's do partners to get this stuff done. Mm. Kinda running out of things to say here, so I, I guess I'll start watching some replays. I'll only watch a few because I want like a, I want to do a different video later where I'm making a more detailed like uh, analysis of replays and like how you actually play play this suit and other suits. Just watch some recent games that come to mind. So here is a uh, god gun in pretty nice con. It's a uh, very active front and good synergy with chill bits. Generally you want your partner to have good synergy with chill bits. It's fine if you have to use them yourself, but it's even stronger if they're strong on your partner. Okay, they're already landing into CC5A, so that's one, like I would say it's strong to do CC5A after landing or step CC5A. They, those two are already strong uses of that. Okay, here I was trying to land a little snipe there. All right, now I'm double locking a little too much on the same sword actually. I have more faith on my partner, get noble. Again, my partner shell bits. Uh, turned quite weak to Vermeil Scarrow suits. Uh, various reasons. Okay, there I hit pistol in the snipe, but Noble caught me. I'm actually having these games in these first few games, and my health is too low. You don't want to be this low health um, as a back in general. Uh, that, <laughs> that's my best trick, but this same sort could kill me, but ends up dying first, which is very lucky for us. Myself. You, one thing with Terry, you really need to practice positioning, teamwork. Uh, my, my position tends to be quite bad. Like getting cornered like that is very, very bad. I'm trying to snipe uh, Noble out of the air there. Can help like that. Uh, have to shield bits on the partner. And yeah, I'm feeling quite confident against these opponents. So I'm sending the more confident you are in your self defense, the more you can send the pistol bits out as far as instead of for, for the free falls. There I saw my partner was going to get hit by pressure, so like, alright, I'll snipe him. Because my partner is probably getting downed. But, you know, it's kind of a weird match. I was kind of getting tagged by my, my, my front. But I would say it shared him kind of the strength. Uh, with shared him, it's ideal if your partner is stronger than you are. It's an interesting quirk of the suit. Like, it's both a hard suit to play, but you also want your partner to be doing most of the work. I'll get some remember something I forgot watching these. Um, but I would say my, my play style tends to be too aggressive, but I am practicing the like I'm practicing some techniques generally recently, so that's my excuse. Alright, there I cancelled the snipe because it was gonna miss. If I did 5A there, I think I would not cancel that back to the semester. Oh shit, that's a bad hit there. Yeah, I see my partner skin. I'm I'm being a bit more like pretty aggressive here because I'm 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 seeing my partner getting double locked. So there's a good example of like the uh, spamming pistols into into funnels. There, I'm trying to catch like some random stuff with five eights being more active, but it doesn't really work out. Um, trying to use five up for self defense. Okay, so yeah, assist those fast falls. Oh, there's another, there's a good example of um, people getting caught up by the multiple fast falls. That is a pretty weird maneuver I did, so I managed to catch them. But they didn't even set the assist because they thought I probably already used it. Okay, friend gets uh, burst. I'm sending shield bits. That's generally what you want to go for on good suits, is you give them shield bits when they get that burst. Nice so, Well, no worries really close to me. So, yeah, another match where my health is far too low. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah. This match, I, to be honest, I played like in terms of my health management, this is terrible. And I recorded myself. That's something to watch out for. What happened here? Okay, caught in snipe. 
Like one another reason 5A is so good is the interval, interval between your shots. Since the shot is faster, the interval between your shots is faster. And it's less like it's much harder for the opponent to dodge like multiple snipes or like faint snipes. And like people might get scared even by the faint snipes that are, like you think are bad attempts. They might be like or they might not they might get scared of you just randomly shooting them. So you might have more strength than you think at first. Like just throwing out snipe attempts but cancelling them out. Oh, I'll just watch the last one of these. <laughs> Probably a little more solid. Could watch some more series games that I have locked, I guess. But I, I'll make another video going through these, hopefully like in a few months or something. Okay, they're trying to catch. Okay, I should have cancelled that, yeah. Mm. It's kind of like sometimes, at least for me, sometimes you have a good feel for cancelling out the snipes, or like even making them, but sometimes you have a bad, bad thing. Um, some of these reads, some of these playing poorly. Um, sometimes you just don't make good reads. I would say at high level that's a potential problem with this suit is like you're reliant on reading the enemy. You don't have traditional like zoomed up pressure. So if you're making constantly bad reads then you just, your pressure is almost non-existent and you're probably, gonna, probably getting double locked. Okay, we're doing a nice... Okay, this time I'm doing a nice job I think. Supporting my partner with some fire. Okay, except... But here was like wave my partner, but it was to be honest my fault. I probably noticed my partner was knocked out. Okay, there is a side block by the boom. My friend showed it. This time my health isn't so bad. Whoa, that this is hit me out of my step. So sad. They're ground level AC to like get to ground level and fast fall, they're pretty strong to keep, I think. Okay, funnels. All right, now I'm all okay. This is dangerous. Let's see. Oh, I'm just I didn't flip intentionally out of the mid. I mean, I didn't need to do that there. That's something I want to practice. Shield it to my partner's bursting. It's going pretty well. Mm, I would say one big thing about trading is you need exceptionally good health management with your partner because if you overcost that's terrible, if you have to front because your partner is too low that's terrible as well. Trading has the even the worst fronting ability tile in the entire game, especially if your partner is like something like Godgun which has no neutral presence. The, if they have to back it's like pretty bad pretty bad situation. So you want to like burn through your health slowly but surely and like making sure it goes perfectly along with your partner. I'd say it's one of the hardest parts of this suit is managing your health to that extent. Uh, let's see, do I have anything interesting? Mm, this is some random shuffle match. I would say again, yeah, this suit is not so good for shuffle but it's mechanically has a lot of it's just a pretty strong suit, but it's not, it's pretty questionable using shuffle, but I would say it's playable. The more you play the shuffle, the more you're reliant on your own attacking ability though, and that makes the shield bits and playing a slow weaker. <laughs> you're not like aiming for random snipes. The 5 lane again. Um, this, this is pretty interesting. It's basically kind of like two sniper suits against two ape suits. I'm trying to zone them out. The shield is protecting me from uh, a lot of stuff there, like the if we miss all this and the arch as well. Okay, here I shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> I got my punch gun. We better to do either nothing or do a snipe. Okay, in this this match I'm doing a good job canceling the main attempts if they're not going to hit. So my reactions are on point. I have a good flow of how the mains work, and they're back for what. Uh, Pistols to zone out the opponent. I feel like arch players in general they tend to lose a lot of boost in their sequences, so the pistols hit more than you think, and they're easier to snap than you think. Okay. 
game trying to get away. I'm kind of lucky. <laughs> I'm very lucky the other enemy is completely annoying. I'm really excited, I guess. Can we go in anyway? Or oh, step fast. But yeah, there you can see. So if you do step fast, like fast falls are weaker against melee of close range. Because they can just smash step melee, they'll hit you after your step. Like, it's much stronger than projectiles. So. That's when you might want the Garo in the way instead of just falling there. And that's. Yeah. Just get in that situation, just do better positioning instead of relying on the fast falls. Against. In like 1v1 against the. Uh, like a dark hunt or something, there's more ability to do that kind of thing, but if they're actually going for melee, then it can be pretty rough. Okay, let's see, do I have any match I want to show? Um, it would be like a B2 game. Show, um... I guess let's check this match, I guess. Cubelay new. I'd say Cubelay Cherubim is not that great of a uh, matchup for Cherubim. Also, B2 Cherubim, I think it's a, like a, it seems playable, but you can completely dominate neutral and you win if there's a slow game, but it's kind of questionable whether Cherubim can, can back for B2 or not. It probably shouldn't be. Possibly. Tower levels. Okay, they're they're a boost dash five. They caught a moving target. Pretty much can happen. Oh, that snipe almost hit. Wow, the enemy, our fronts are getting hit a lot here. I think my my strategy against this game was basically just hit the front a lot. Because I noticed uh, he was playing way past the enemy back, so. That works against him. It's basically, what this can happen with Sheridan as well is what, what is happening to this cube like here is your front is playing way, way, way faster than you are, and there's just um, getting trouble. There's not like he's having to melee, and with Sheridan that can be even worse because you, you have to go in with your like pseudo machine gun thing and waste your assist ammo doing fast falls, and not even being in sniper range. You wanna quickly force boost and stuff. Right. Oh, there I cancelled shield bits for a step fast I think my partner said on Mikey didn't need the bits or something. Maybe that was an accidental <laughs> counter. Um, yeah, I don't think I should have sent out the bits there. My ammo was low, it was too far away. The maximum range, the travel distance of the funnel is actually quite low. That's one interesting thing is you do want to hit them, like you, you don't want to throw out the funnels at your maximum red lock a lot of time, because they will not surround the enemy at all. Well, yeah, this match is quite, pretty close. But he got out by the, got caught up by the AB girl. He's too strong. Let's watch one more, I think. In general, I would say like my own replays, maybe I show quite a bit of the tech side, but my positioning and health management is pretty poor right now. But yeah, okay, let's watch a match where I lose to finish off, I guess. I think I overcost in this match. Maybe one more after this. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So against this team, I would say like Terran Reborns isn't a bad matchup. Like they're much worse streets to be using as Reborns, but oh, he's super aggressive, like uh, like me. Whoa, whoa, okay, I screwed my fast falls and everything there. I'm out of sub ammo. It's quite dangerous. Oh. Could it be dangerous? He could have, if he shot me a sub. So we won't sub does hit through shield, but that's dangerous. Oh well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of wanting a remorse, but he's at a range where it's awkward. And yeah, the sub is like the the, the sub dominates this matchup. The remorse sub. If he had didn't have sub, he'd be fine. But you know, yes, sub. So. Let's do 
too bad that Cyborg Tog is still missed. I was too slow to start it up. Proved to be possible. Oh well. Okay, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, finally some hits. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Well, then. That might have been because I did it without ammo and did the falling down version. I, I thought I would hit reborns there. Yeah, I'm just trying to not die first, but oh, I did not. That was a bad to be overheat to be never do that. That's too bad. I, I played kind of poorly against the reborns in the match. Okay, now I'm trying to I, I burst it because I want to be more aggressive, but it's it burst the reborns. It's kind, of, kind of hard to deal with. Fun thing with Sherlin is not pretty. And yeah, now they're all bursting on my partner. I think it's a big problem. This. You just can't overcost with Sherlin. I know I was doing I was doing an overheat sequence there, thinking I had main, but my main ammo was empty, so that's not even valid. Basically, I screwed that matchup. I should have defended myself a bit better. I did really bad on the last bit of well, the very first start of my first life and the end of my first life. I made some big mistakes. So which one more? Like something I've locked maybe. I guess let's watch one of these. Though these matches tend to be a bit, tend to be a bit all over the place. Let's see if there's something good here. But this is a, 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 a guy I partnered with quite a bit. And he has only the last few weeks and such, so he's more coordinated than some of the other teams. Though we haven't been playing on Mike though. All oh, these snipes are kind of bad. I remember I played. <laughs> But probably some of these games are important. Okay. Yeah, probably one of them has to. Wow, this looks really bad. Uh, cornered. Cornered Garrison. I should be cornered like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I meant pretty much this. That was a bit terrible. Oh, there's some. The 5 AC would need it there. But generally, I've, I've been doing really poor here. And that, that was a poor sniper there. Oh, he screwed up his company. Okay, there's the uh, uh, the boost dash in here. Ah, oh, terrible boost dash in here. This is... Okay, pistols in the funnels. Happens pretty often. Point range. This might be a game where I overcost. Oh, come on. Yeah, counter into pistols. Nice. Overcast, not very nice. Whenever you see Cherry meet overcast, it's not a, <laughs> not a good win for this match, but I can show you what goes wrong, I guess. In this case, I just played pistol at the start of the match. And my snipes haven't been really very good. But what I am doing is at least I'm gathering locks, like they aren't double locked for my partner, so that's a. Something that at least is trying correctly. Somehow CSB hit there. I think Master should not let that happen. He just kind of moving me. This CSB doesn't work. Nice. My partner pretty much doing that here. Blocks that. Oh, nice. He does the flip out of the block. That's really. I think that can be a smart option against the force. I get another burst because they're not even on again. And then confirm the allies hitting this. That can happen quite a bit. And depending on the partner's suit, that can be a very strong thing, is confirming hits into the main. But to be honest, that match, I did, like, in terms of Cherrigan fundamentals, almost nothing went correctly there. It was just kind of constant scrambles. And basically my partner doing everything. The one thing that was going correctly in terms of Cherrigan was me gathering, like, at least one enemy was on me, like, all the time. At least that happened. Uh, I'll, I'll do like, I think I'll do more match analysis later, another video, get some like better reference matches, watch some other players, like JP players, 
uh, give you a better idea of how the suit is should be played, etc. And maybe like if there's any tech I'm missing, I'll fill on those as well. Alright, thanks. Thanks for watching, and I'll probably make a Susano and Toggies 3 videos next after that. I don't know.